Hello and welcome to Nikon Report, your weekly roundup of all the latest Nikon news and all other photographic announcements that we found interesting. This is Constantine and here is Becky. All right, so before we go with our main story of the week, yes. what shall we mention? Thank you to everyone who voted for us. We won the Amateur Photographer 2021 Good Service Platinum Award. Yay! Thank you everyone who voted for us. We really, really appreciate it. We truly do. The main news of the week is what came from Nikon from CP Plus show. Well, to keep it short, pretty much nothing. No. Nope. Um, <laughs> we were waiting for announcement for quite some time. Uh, here's the picture of me waiting for the announcement from Nikon. Let's take a moment of silence. <laughs> Let me appreciate the beam generator work by that's, me. That's right. It's great. So Nikon didn't introduce any new products. However, they did say a lot about the fact that they have this great mirrorless system, which we cannot deny, and encouraged people to try it and use it and uh, assured everyone that was watching that they are very much contenders in the mirrorless market. Yes, the Nikon held um, several talks on different aspects, um, not just, the, let's say, photography, but also videography as well. What they mentioned, kind of the main takeaways from their talks, Nikon is planning to release many new products this year, Nikon also plans to have 27 lenses and two teleconverters in Z lens roadmap by 2022. Mm -hmm. So that's the next two years. Z lenses that are planned in the future, and um, some of them will come out this year. We have prime S lenses. We've got 85 millimeter S lens, 400 millimeter, and 600 millimeter lenses. Now, the news on 400 and 600 millimeter lenses, Nikon recently updated their patent in the United States with regards to these lenses. This literally just came out last week. In prime lens, we also have two pancake lenses, 28 and 40 millimeter. We have 50 millimeter micro lens and some zoom lenses such as 24 to 105, 100 to 400, 200 to 600, and DX 18 to 140 lenses. They also mentioned that they invest in their R&D for five, 10 years ahead, just to make sure that they're competitive enough and mirrorless technology is well advanced in the future. They updated us on a um, one-inch sensor, and they said on that development that we covered last week, and basically what they said is that they're not planning any commercialization of this sensor for consumer products no. as of yet. Exactly. Things may change, of course. And um, on the video side of things, they say that Nikon is not developing a dedicated cinema-only camera, but they're listening to requests, and they will implement them in the future camera. From our experience, if you look, let's say, at something like Z6 and Z7 cameras, they're definitely really good for video work. They are gearing products towards video work more and more, I would say, particularly in the Z6 and the Z6 II, and the fact that we now have essential movie kits for both of those cameras. Absolutely. The movie kits slightly differ in the US to the UK, but it mm -hmm. does look like their concentration is on trying to bring more videographers into the Nikon fold. Absolutely. And that's... New film wear release, uh, 60 frames 4K that's on right. uh, Z6 camera as well. Yeah, so that is good news, even if we wanted a release and we didn't get one. Absolutely. And we also had another confirmation that Nikon is developing a hind end camera. And basically, they say, we'll wait for it. <laughs> is that what they said? Yes. We're developing a high end camera. Wait for it. Please understand. We don't have. <laughs> We don't have much of a choice but to wait for it, do we? So Exactly. So, Becky, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. So, what happened? Is Nikon lowballing us? Did they already wrote off their financial year? Well, normally around this time of year, we do have product yeah. announcements. Mm -hmm. We have promotions. We often get uh, like a spring cash back or yes. an instant saving. Saying that, we had quite an extensive promo over winter. That's true. That lasted two months. Yeah. And if you remember back in September, we also had a massive promotion on F-mount lenses mm -hmm. and a number of other things, which we have actually still been waiting for stock of mm. until quite recently. So I think that although maybe it's not Nikon's intention, they are trying to just keep up with product demand of the existing products. Mm -hmm. So I keep cup and carry on? Keep, keep cup? Keep, keep cup. cup. <laughs> keep cup and carry on. <laughs> That's Con's new version. Yes. Uh, they, they are keeping calm and carrying on, mm -hmm. keeping their heads down. Okay. Like us all, uh, trying to 
make it to a point where there's enough stock there for everybody mm-hmm. to stay happy. I mean, what do you, would you prefer that they announce new products or that they supply the products that we've been waiting for for months? I have the same dilemma as you. So from point as a photographer, mm. I'd like to see the new announcements, especially yeah. when other brands announce new cameras. Uh, yeah, of course. From other point of view, yes, I would like them to replenish their stocks because Z6 Mark II and Z7 Mark II cameras are pretty much sold out. Yeah. Z lenses are dripping very slowly in very small quantities. Mm-hmm. Obviously, in UK, Brexit and the whole border control system doesn't you know, work really well. It doesn't help. It's a comedy yeah. of errors. <laughs> Absolutely. Silly. But at the same time, yes, I see, let's say, okay, let's, let's go to the gaming world. Let's say console were announced uh, well released last year mm-hmm. can you still buy playstation 5 in the shop no, no you, you cannot the same with xbox etc etc i don't care about xbox graphics cards nintendo well switch is, has been out for three years <laughs> yeah um <laughs> in computer personal computer scene the nvidia and, Gra- uh, and amd graphics cards have mm. been pretty much sold out yeah and uh, you can buy one by paying triple the price on ebay right So, yes, I do agree that they need to replenish their stocks. And obviously, the COVID didn't help because a lot of supply issues is around the COVID because a lot of countries are in lockdown at the moment. Yeah. So the manufacturing is affected. But at the same time, as a photographer, in me, I'd love to see new announcements. I'd like to see something exciting. Yeah, because otherwise you kind of get that fear of missing out. But Sony announced something and Fuji announced something and I'm a Nikon user, so I want something too. You know, it will be interesting to see um, because the camera should be out, I think, this month um, in March. Yeah. I want to see if they can actually deliver as many cameras as their pre-orders. That that has not happened in a number of years. I think... If if my memory serves me, going back to the D3X, that was the mm-hmm. last time that I recall we had a delivery yes. which matched the number of back orders that we had. And ever since then, we've pretty much had the situation where we have tons of pre-orders and we get a small amount and we have to just handle things. The reason that I sound so um, contentious about this is because I deal with the back orders. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So it gives me extra gray hairs every oh, time yes. I have to deal with it. <laughs> but from the other point of view, it even if the camera is not announced, it doesn't mean it's not being manufactured. No. And sometimes we do see Nikon do development announcements. Exactly. Maybe they could do that instead just to keep us happy. Um, like they did with the D5 and the D6. They did development announcements just to let us all know that something was coming. It's happening. Yeah. It was like, we promise, just be patient. We're still working on it. So we could have something like that. I'd be, I'd be up for that. Um, I agree. And then obviously end of March is end of financial year, pretty much in all countries, including Japan. Mm-hmm. But just looking at what probably will be announced this year, so we're going to have Tokyo Olympics in July. Yes. We probably will see a some high-end camera release for this type of work. So effectively a D6 Z equivalent or Z9, perhaps. Throwing that name there. Yeah, Z9. why not? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And then obviously they mentioned that they will have nine Z lenses out this year. That's right, yeah. So I think we'll start to see them pour it through. They're going to have to be very aggressive with their announcements if they're going to keep up with that schedule, I would say, particularly because we're supposed to see a DSLR body of some form, two DSLRs. We have Z8 and Z9 for full frame. Supposedly. Yeah. There was two DSLRs. How many Z cameras did they say they were going to do? Z8 and Z9. Um, I personally predict one or two full frame Zs and one um, DXZ. Okay, so they didn't say how many cameras they were going to do. They did mention. They they only said a high-end camera so far. And they promised last year two DSLRs for this year in that interview that we talked about in one of our very early podcasts. Okay, I'm with you now. Okay, That's what I was talking about. I'm with you. So DSLRs probably G880. Potentially. Okay. And maybe, although not necessarily, but I was wondering if they would replace something like the D500 or have a DX body announced in the DSLR lineup because the D- the DX bodies have kind of blurred a little bit as to what you should get. You've got the entry levels, mm-hmm. you've got the mid range, and then you've got the D500 as a pro body. It's a difficult one, isn't it, with D500 because... They all shoot the same resolution. That's basically. true, that's true. It's Z50 and mm-hmm. the upcoming Z30 probably <laughs> will have the same sense there. Yeah. But the story with D500 is a difficult one because we had such a big gap between D300S replacement and D500 announcement. Eight years or something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So having 
a high-end camera that will be fairly expensive. So yeah. we're probably we're looking at something like £2,000 for the X camera. How many do you need to sell to make it profitable? Yes, that's a good question. That's the question. But overall, what do you reckon? Um, I would say if we can have a production announcement, that'd be great. If not, then let's just have the proper announcement as soon as possible. In the meantime, I do think that having more stock of the stuff that's already available or already out would be ideal. There's the amount of problems between changing factories, closing factories, um, COVID worker regulations where they can't have as many people on production lines, mm -hmm. plus Brexit has made um, life as a supplier very difficult for them, I think. And, uh, and you know, we, we notice it. And I think it will make our lives easier. And by when I say ours, I mean mine, <laughs> if we just have some more stock. In the meantime, we are waiting. We keep calm and carry on. That's right. And the rest of the show is going to be the positive one. <laughs> was, I thought that was positive. <laughs> that wasn't unpositive. You know what grinds my gears, Con? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. CP Plus has ended. But photography show is going to happen this weekend. I'm very excited about the schedule. <laughs> can I talk about it? Yes, absolutely. So it's an online show. It is. Yeah, you can register for free in the link in the description below. Yeah, we. you can also check out Nikon's full schedule, but I'm just going to give you some highlights. So we have Neil and Rishi from yes. Nikon School, friends of the shop and friends of the show. They are going to be doing a couple of Q&A sessions. We've also got the wonderful Donna Cruz, who mm. is a very, have you seen her food photography? I have, yes. Phenomenal. She's a Nikon ambassador and also a Rotolite ambassador. And the magic that she wields with her camera and simple ingredients is just mind-boggling. She's done events for Nikon Owner as well. So and nice. I've been to those. so anyway, that's very much well worth tuning into. Um, we also have uh, Tom Mason. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know Tom. He's no. a YouTuber. All right. And just like us. Just like us. All right. And and he's British and he says he calls it Nikon Z, which I love. All right. <laughs> And he does wildlife photography. So he's doing a little um, video on wildlife photography on the doorstep. Okay. Which is also nice. These are all things that I think will be useful for people, particularly this year. We've been so used to trying to find, or the, in the last 12 months, I should say, trying to find photography closer to home. So with Donna Cruz's workshop, with Neil and Rishi doing things on landscape mm -hmm. and portraiture, and then with Andy Parkinson, who's also a wildlife and landscape photographer, and Tom Mason. I think that's a an all-star lineup. Very Absolutely. much worth Absolutely. tuning into. And they also will do some Q&As on um, DSLRs, lenses and flashes, mm -hmm. um, and also on Z cameras. So do tune in on, on that stream and ask any questions you like. Excellent. Just as a side note, is it paid for? No, it's free. It's free. And it's free. To free you. for you. Okay. Next up, the Chinese website Shitech. Zitech. 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 Published and translated a new Z72 development interview with Nikon managers. Now we've just taken some spark notes for you. So Google Translated. <laughs> this is Google Translated, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So those are tidbits that we found interesting. So um in terms of development of this uh, Mark II series of cameras, uh, the main thing we see is basically quality of life improvements. So they say improved algorithmic things, so focus and image processing, better battery life, better buffer, continuous speed, improved video functions, and addition of some modest features such as 900 second long exposure ability. Those are kind of the main things. Mm. So it's not a groundbreaking. No. Very difficult to market, I would say. But actually, for the users of Mark II series cameras, we definitely um, saw some improvements. Yeah. I used Z6 Mark II for last two weeks long from Nikon, mm -hmm. and I did find it um, overall, it performed better than Mark I Z6. That's very interesting. Now, from other things that we've learned there, they said that N-Log recorded internally has lowish priority for them. So at the moment, N-Log is being recorded to devices like Atomos and Blackmagic. Mm -hmm. so, and that's via raw support, which needs to be enabled by Nikon. Yes. They also mentioned but, uh, that besides of impact of dual processor, significant algorithmic changes were made to the focus system. And I guess we saw it with the firmware announcement where now we have an eye recognition at much longer distances. That's right. And also the overall animal detection seems to be more sensitive 
and accurate. Is that the word? Yeah, I can tell you that uh, I used the camera on Saturday where I photographed my pup mm -hmm. running around in the field towards me, which is very difficult for the continuous tracking. Yeah, for sure. To A, recognize the face, and B, because it has to change the distance almost from infinity to the closest distance. Mm. And I would say, normally, I would take about three shots out of 10 that would be sharp with a new film where it's increased to five. Okay, that is, uh, that's a real life improvement as opposed to, you know, sitting there in a testing booth trying to work out whether it's changed or not when you've got a, a puppy running around in front of yes. you, you can definitely tell. Anything else that they mentioned had been improved? No, I think that's kind of the, the gist of it. They said that they recognized more types of eyes, especially animals, mm. and also trying to recognize the smaller eyes. At a distance. At a distance. The Nikon Z series gains 30% burst capacity with CF Express. All right. So the company, which is called Camnostic, they rented Z7 Mark II camera mm -hmm. and test it with a variety of CF Express cards. That's what they do. They just test memory cards with different brands. Wow. So they've tested Z7 Mark II and they said compared to XQD cards, CF Express cards gave more images in burst. Right. So by 30%. So as example, they said here, they had 173 raw images compared to 129% images from XPD car. A 30% improvement. Here we go. Do your math. Are we done with that? Yeah. Okay, good. Just a quick reminder that Nikon released firmware updates for the Z62 and Z72 cameras last week, I believe it was, uh, with improved IAF and also, Blackmagic raw support. So do your firmware updates, people. It's a game changer. <laughs> did you do the firmware update? On the I Z62? did the firmware updates. Um, overall, they didn't say that it was overall autofocus improvement, but I did notice it. Mm. Cameras definitely feels a little bit more responsive. Now, a couple of things that they haven't mentioned last time. So the, in Z6 firmware, they introduced uh, 4K in the crop. We've discussed that. Yes. Keep in mind, there's a 50 frames per second if you want to shoot that. They also advise for both Z6 and Z7 Mark II, if you use SD cards, they have to be at least 250 megabyte per second writing capacity, otherwise 4K won't work. Okay. So that's an important one. And another important thing is they fixed the issue that sometimes prevented the camera downloading location data via SnapRecharge while using MBN11 power battery pack. That is a very niche issue to have, but es good that they... <laughs> Especially for those two people who have NBM11 battery pack, because you can't just buy them in UK, no, unfortunately. you can't at the moment. So for them, for those lucky people, I suppose that's a great bug fix right there. Absolutely. Another thing, which is quite a niche, but basically for people shooting Apple RAW or Ninja, mm -hmm. if you use Apple's Final Cut Pro, it will allow you to change additional sliders there. Speaking of Atomos Ninja, they released the firmware uh, for their Ninja 5 recording device mm -hmm. where they enabled ProRes RAW from Nikon Z6 Mark II and Z7 Mark II cameras. Excellent. Nikon also updated Camera Control Pro 2 to version 2.33.1. They added support for 4K ultra high definition 60 slash 50p on the Z62. That's Z62 Vermoy version 1.10 and later. Mm -hmm. And added support for Mac Big Sur OS, that's version 11. Big Sur. And they ended support for High Sierra version 10.13. Why did I say it like that? Because my iMac has High Sierra and it cannot be updated anymore. It was good while it lasted. It was. Sad, sad day. Rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> Nikon also updated the article on its support website with regards to a number of VR accesses used with Z series mirrorless cameras, where they included Z6 Mark II and Z7 Mark II cameras. Yeah, but is it accesses or is it axes? It's axes. <laughs> axesses. Axesses. All right. This week, there were several third party lenses announced, the first of which was the Venus Optics release of a Leowa. 65mm f2.8, two times ultra macro DX for Nikon Z mount. Wow, that's a mouthful. It is. All right, so it weighs 335 grams. Nothing. Nice and light. Mm -hmm. So if you've got something like Z uh, Z50, it might be a good choice. Yes. So it's an APS-C lens. Yes. Designed specifically for that DX sensor. There is only currently one camera, although if Con Z30 comes out this year, then there'll be two cameras. And it will come. 
So a few specifications, uh, lens structure is 14 elements in 10 groups, nine aperture blades, it's manual focus only, and it closes, the minimum focusing distance is 17 centimeters or two to one reproduction. Nice. All right, next up we have uh, seven artisans introduced two lenses for the mm -hmm. Nikon Z mount. We have a 35 f 5.6 pancake at only $200 and a 7.5 millimeter f2.8 mark ii fisheye which is retailing at only 150 dollars yay both are manual focus both are reasonably cheap it's nice to have nice cheap lenses for your z system exactly we're waiting for a nikon pancake lens but actually that 35 f5.6 looks quite interesting at only 200 dollars. very portable mm -hmm. and if the roadmap is anything to go by it sits between the nikon 28 and the 45 doesn't it Ooh. so that's true. You never have too many pancake lenses. And speaking of good deals, UK company three-legged thing is currently selling their Z50 L brackets at 50% discount. So they're about 30 pounds instead of regular 60. Yeah. So that's the Zela for anyone looking for the model number there. Um, they also do L brackets for the Z, uh, sorry, the they also do L brackets for the full frame Z cameras, which is the Zelda, and then the more generic DSLR L bracket or universal L bracket, which mm. is called the Ellie. Mario and Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> no many reviews out this week. Only one, and this by friend of shop, Moose Pitson, uh, who talks about uh, Nico Z 7200 lens and why he likes it. Check out his YouTube video in the link below. And finally, for our weekend read and watch segment, we have Did the Pandemic Change Wedding Photography Forever by Olivia Harrison. Now, if any wedding photographers are watching us, we would love to know your experience regarding the situation because obviously it has been a very interesting last 12 months and has, I personally think, changed the way that a lot of us do photography in general. Absolutely. Um, the article is on refinery29.com and the link will be both in the podcast notes and in the description below if you'd like to have a read of that. The next one was published by Nikon Rumors and it's called Nikon Z6 for War Conflict Journalism by Alex Cooney. Now, he writes about his experiences using this camera in conflict zones mm. around the world. Mm. Again, very interesting article. It's not something that, let's say, we enjoy. No one enjoys war, I would say. But no. if you just want to see his hands on how he feels the camera performs, mm -hmm. it's an interesting read. For sure. We also have the best monitors for photography and photo editing in 2021. That's by Petapixel. So if you have been looking at a new monitor for your editing, then that's worth a read. Absolutely. Please keep in mind, color calibration is the key. Yes, exactly. Uh, we also have the 10th Annual Mobile Photography Awards, which crowns its winners for this year. Now, why did you choose this article, Con? The reason why I chose this article is to make you all angry about that <laughs> and say why iPhone is killing DSLRs. But the important note there is just have a look at the creativity. It doesn't matter what you use. If you use your phone or if you use, let's say, the most expensive camera in the world, mm -hmm. it's about the images that you create. So just have a look at what's been created with those little phones and now think but the potential of creating the same image with, let's say, camera like Z-System camera. Yeah, exactly. So it's just a, an article on Petapixel to broaden your horizons a little bit, let's say. Now for our watch recommendation we have the Nikon Z62 and ProRes raw benefits and tutorials which comes from Nikon themselves yes it? they published a few videos um, a couple of them on how to set it up your Ninja 5 mm -hmm. with that system camera and another one just of the benefits of shooting raw excellent and that's it for this week thanks for joining us now a couple more things before we leave mm -hmm. where can we find you becky uh, you can find me on instagram at rebecca underscore denazi or on my website rebecca .com. you and can you buy becky's book on amazon as well you can all four of them <laughs> <laughs> and where can we find you I'm on Instagram, Konstin Kochkin, and you can also check out my blog at konstinkochkin.co.uk slash forward blog. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so. And if you do listen to us on uh, podcast platforms like, let's say, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please leave us a review. We will be greatly appreciating this. We will be greatly appreciating this. <laughs> we will greatly appreciate it. This will be greatly appreciated. I forgot what I was saying at this point, so I was just rolling with so it. So much but appreciation. Yeah. Oh, but before we go, okay, I want to end this podcast yes. with a 
new Pentax camera announcement. Okay. Yes. Oh, so can let's we get this can up we, and running. We have a bonus segment for you all. So Pentax announced the Pentax K1 Mark II mm -hmm. limited camera. So let's have a look at this. So this is the picture of the front. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Pentax has a great taste. I love red. <laughs> it's a uh, very red red. Yeah, they do a blue version of that. Nice. And then and then. Oh, this is a tilted screen at the back. <laughs> and this is a side view. Absolutely. That's You see, they do red one and they do gray metal. I as like well. that very much. Uh, and then they do a Decepticon version, which is black with a wooden sort of paneled grip. Thank you, Pentax. Yeah, we like that. We like that very much. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.